liking is the okay the 42nd lecture frequency domain analysis of LTI systems excited by random inputs we had uh, discussed uh, the statistical properties of the output of an LTI system XT is a random input and YT is the output YT is also random we showed how to find out Y bar and Y squared bar and also R Y tau R Y tau was expressed all these quantities were expressed in terms of X bar X bar squared no X squared bar and R X tau the next probability the next statistical description is the cross correlation between Y and X and the cross correlation is defined like this R x y tau is equal to expected value of x t and y t plus tau I will do one of the derivations the other you can do yourself this obviously is expected value of x t and y t plus tau is minus infinity to infinity uh, minus infinity to infinity y I'm sorry x t plus tau minus lambda the convolution with h lambda d lambda and what you do is again you interchange the integration and expectation so you get minus infinity to infinity expectation of x t and x t plus tau minus lambda would be simply r x of yes or lambda minus tau does it make a difference yeah. all right let us take it tau minus lambda oh, oh no rx of tau minus lambda it does not make a difference then multiplied by h lambda d lambda and you can see interestingly that this is simply rx of tau convolved with h of tau is that clear r the cross correlation coefficient is simply the convolution of r x tau and h tau now if I take the other cross correlation that is r y x of tau what do you think the change shall be pardon me r y x tau what do you think shall it be it will it will be minus infinity to infinity then instead of tau minus lambda I shall have tau no is not that clear it we should have rx of tau plus lambda h lambda d lambda that is all the change there shall be because what we have to do is to take the expected value of x t plus tau and then y t expected value of this so this would be in the integral this would be x t minus lambda and if you take the difference between the two arguments to find out r x it would be tau plus lambda is that clear now is this point clear or do I have to do the algebra I think this should be clear y t shall involve integral of this then h lambda d lambda you combine this and this take the expectation then you get rx of tau plus lambda now can this be viewed as a convolution can this be viewed as a convolution no it is not a convolution of rx tau with h tau however it indeed can be viewed as a convolution if you change lambda to minus lambda put lambda equal to minus lambda prime change the variables then yes you can it would be a convolution with instead of h lambda h of minus lambda but we will leave it as it is we will not h of minus lambda we will not bring that into the picture we will say r y x of tau is this and you notice well let me also write r x y tau this is minus infinity to infinity r x tau minus lambda h lambda d lambda and you notice that r x y tau is not necessarily equal to 
R X Y tau. These two are not necessarily equal. But you also notice that if you put tau equal to 0, they are absolutely identical. And therefore, R Y X 0 is equal to R X Y 0. What is the physical interpretation of this? The cross correlation coefficient at tau equal to 0. It has no particular physical significance. The only uh, thing is it obeys the inequality that Rxy tau mod is less than equal to square root of Rx0 and Ry0. Is that okay, Abhay? Or you do not remember? You do remember. That is wonderful. Okay. Suppose um, Rx tau, suppose it is a, the input is a white noise process that is Rx tau is S0 times delta tau. Well, then what would be Rxy tau? This is Rx tau convolved with H tau and therefore this would be simply equal to, yes, what would be the value? If Rx tau is this, the value would be S0 times H tau. On the other hand, R y x tau, which is minus infinity to infinity, R x tau plus lambda, h lambda d lambda, we check the temptation of equating this to a, uh, to a convolution. We will keep it as it is. Now, if this is S naught h tau plus lambda, I beg your pardon, S naught R x tau plus lambda is delta tau plus lambda. All right. Then what would be the value of the integral? It would be S naught H of minus tau. Now you notice why they are not equal. R x y tau is S naught H tau and R y x tau is S naught H of minus tau. If the impulse response is an even function, then they should be equal. Not in general though. It is a particular case for white noise process. All right. Let's take an. Uh, I think I'll skip the example. We consider then analysis in the frequency domain. In the frequency domain, the quantity that we have been familiar with is the spectral density, that is S x of omega, and S x of omega is simply the Fourier transform of Rx of tau. This we have established already. All right. So if we know Sx of omega, the spectral density of the input random process, is it possible to find out Sy of omega? This is what we are asking now. And if I if I want to find Sy of omega, obviously the the, the thing to find would be R R Y of tau. That is the autocorrelation of the output process and we have already derived an expression for this r y of tau you recall is equal to minus infinity to infinity and I said unfortunately this cannot be simplified further. So let us write the complete expression d lambda 1 then minus infinity to infinity r x of lambda 2 minus lambda 1 minus tau multiplied by h lambda 1 h lambda 2 d lambda 2. This is the expression. Now, <coughs> if I take the Fourier transform of this, let me use a different color. If I use the Fourier transform of this, what does it mean? It means that I use another integral from minus infinity to infinity and I multiply by, multiply by e to the minus j omega Yes, tau d tau. All right, this would be equal to S y of omega. Now let's see how we carry out this integration. What we do is we first integrate with respect to tau, and therefore what we will get is minus infinity to infinity d lambda one minus infinity to infinity h lambda one h lambda two. They don't involve tau. Then the third integral 
is minus infinity to infinity r x lambda 2 minus lambda 1 minus tau e to the minus j omega tau d tau. Is that okay? There is something I am missing. What? d lambda 2. Let us put it here. d lambda 2. Now look at this carefully. I would omit a couple of steps. I would go to the simplification right away. Uh, notice that uh, that this function, the argument of this can be negated without any change. All right. So I can write this as lambda minus. I'm sorry, tau. Tau. I can write this as tau minus what lambda. 2 minus lambda 1. Is that okay? If I negate the argument of this, I can write this as Rx tau minus lambda 2 minus lambda 1. Now, if lambda 2 minus lambda 1 was not there, if it was not there, then what we get is simply Rx tau e to the minus j omega tau d tau. What does it imply? It is simply Sx of omega. Now, instead of Rx of tau, I have Rx of tau minus a constant. The Fourier transform of f of t minus a is simply e to the minus j omega a multiplied by the Fourier transform and therefore the result for this is obvious. I therefore write s y of omega as equal to minus infinity to infinity. This derivation is, a, is an extremely elegant derivation. Minus infinity to infinity h lambda 1 h lambda 2 d lambda 2 then I have s x of omega multiplied by e to the power minus j omega times lambda 2 minus lambda 1. Is that okay? The Fourier transform. Now, S x of omega is simply a constant as far as this integration is concerned because the integral integration variables are lambda 1 and lambda 2. Therefore, I can bring this down here S x of omega then lambda 1 and lambda 2 are independent of each other and therefore I can I can separate the two integrals. Let us first do with respect to lambda 1 h lambda 1 the only other term in lambda 1 is minus j omega minus lambda 1. So, e to the power plus j omega lambda 1 d lambda 1 and multiplied by minus infinity to infinity h lambda 2 e to the minus j omega lambda 2 d lambda 2. Is that okay? I have separated the two integrals because lambda 1 and lambda 2 are independent of each other. And if you notice carefully, what is this? Is not this simply equal to h of omega? That is the Fourier transform of h lambda. Lambda 2 is a dummy variable. All right. And what is this? h of minus omega. And we know that one, this is a complex conjugate of the other. And therefore, the result that we establish is S y of omega equal to S x of omega multiplied by h omega and h of minus omega which means that it is h omega whole squared. This is exactly like the system function except that it relates the spectral density that is the power of the output to the power of the input and therefore, this quantity h of omega magnitude squared which is s y omega over s x of omega is called the power transfer function. In the frequency domain you see the sim analysis is very much simplified because it is simply it is simply a multiplication of the input spectral density by the power transfer function and power transfer function is very simply related to the uh, voltage transfer function or current transfer function. It is simply the magnitude squared. All right, And this affords a lot of simplification in actual practice. Well, let us write it down again S y omega equal to S x omega multiplied by h of omega multiplied by h of minus omega, h of minus omega. <coughs> if I transfer this to the S plane by analytic continuation, then I shall write S y of S, I simply replace omega by S by J. 
and I change the functional notation s x of s what shall I get here h of s by j shall we change this to h of s well I write this as h of s is equal to h of s by j do you understand why I am changing the notation because the functional form is different I cannot write this by analytic continuation capital H of S no I cannot write that because the functional form is different so H of minus S all right this is in the S domain by analytic continuation and as you know in evaluation of integrals it is this form which is preferred because you can then evaluate by contour integration or by tables as the case may be and I told you that tables for n uh, polynomial uh, I am sorry a rational function of degree n equal to 1 to 10 these are available for calculation of the mean squared values x squared bar or y squared bar. What I mean um, let me illustrate with an example suppose we have a simple RC network this is our uh, favorite network because it illustrates many concepts you know that h of h of s is equal to b by s plus b all right and therefore if s x of omega is given if s x of omega is given uh, then s y of s shall be equal to s x of s multiplied by h of s times h of minus s which is b by s plus b multiplied by b by minus s plus b all right. So this is equal to s x of s b squared divided by b squared minus s squared okay. Suppose uh, the input process is white noise that is s x of omega is equal to s naught then what is s x of s? is the same. So this would be equal to b squared s naught divided by let us write this uh, s plus b times minus s plus b. Now if I want to find out the mean squared value what do I do y squared bar I write this as 1 over 2 pi j if you recall this integration minus j infinity to plus j infinity and then s y of s then ds and as you recall hopefully that if we write this as n of s n of minus s divided by d of s d of minus s ds and we choose n of s and d of s to contain the left half plane roots in this particular case what would be n of s no it would be b square root of s because n of s n of minus s is b squared s naught and therefore one part it is a constant square root of this is to be given to n of s square root of this is to be given to n of minus s and obviously this is equal to in terms of polynomial notation c 0 all other constants are 0 d of s is equal to s plus b and s therefore c I am sorry d1 is equal to 1 and d0 equal to b and this integral shall then be evaluated as it is a first order polynomial first order rational function therefore n equal to 1 and the integral shall be evaluated as i1 which is tabulated in the book. So we take account of that integral that expression and we can evaluate y squared bar in this case as you can do the algebra the final result is b s naught divided by 2 this is the result. <coughs> Do you know, do you recall how this formula was obtained? 
What is the genesis of this formula? That's right. An autovolution function was the inverse Fourier of the spectral density. It is an inverse Fourier transform. And then it put tau equal to zero. All right. We take a, a next example, the same network RC, but the input noise process, input process is not white, it is colored noise. And suppose Sx of omega, you recall that a low pass kind of noise would have a spectral density like this. And we took an expression earlier which is beta squared S naught divided by omega squared plus beta squared or beta squared plus omega squared. All right. What is the autocorrelation function of this? What is the inverse transform of this? S naught e to the power minus beta. S naught e to the power minus beta mod tau. I think there should be a beta, beta and the division by 2. I am not sure. This is the autocorrelation function. And this all this is an autocorrelation function of colored noise. Colored noise because the spectral density diminishes, decreases with frequency. Okay. If this is so and we are interested in finding S y of omega <coughs> from which we find y squared bar, then Carrying out the algebra, we see that <coughs> S y of S would be equal to B squared beta squared S 0 divided by S squared minus B squared multiplied by S squared minus beta squared. Is that difficult to see? S x of omega, I convert this to S x of S. And what I get is minus beta squared S naught divided by S squared minus beta squared. Actually, it is minus S squared plus beta squared. I take a negative sign. And then I multiply by H of S times H of minus S, which is B squared divided by B squared minus S squared. Is it okay? No. Minus S plus B. Yeah. Okay. And then <coughs> this is what I obtain, S Y X. Now, if I integrate this, that is, if I if I take Y squared bar as 1 by 2 pi J minus J infinity to plus J infinity, B squared beta squared S naught divided by, let us write this clearly, S plus B, S plus beta. Then I have S minus B s minus beta can you tell me multiplied by ds can you tell me what is n of s b beta square root of s naught all right and d of s s squared plus b plus beta s plus b beta now you have to be careful here because if this is n of s, then n of minus s is not in this form. n of minus s should have been d of minus s should have been minus s plus b times minus s plus beta. And because both have negative signs, the product can be written, retained in this form. If it was not so, then your n of s had to be changed. The negative sign had to come somewhere. All right, is that clear? Now, what is this integral now? This integral is obviously I2. And you have C0 equal to this, D0, D0 is B beta, D1 is B plus beta and D2 is equal to 1. Now you substitute in the formulas and evaluate I2. The final result is <coughs> Y squared bar is equal to B beta S naught divided by twice B plus beta. <coughs> and you see that if beta is much greater than B, if beta is much greater than B, then what is the input noise process? It approximates white noise. Then Y squared bar tends to, if beta is much greater than B, then it tends to B S naught divided by 2, which is also white noise. Is that clear? 
which is also white noise. Yes or no? Why skirt bar has nothing to do with white noise? Output of what do you mean output? Of? Yeah, okay. <laughs> mean squared value of the output of white noise. All right. The point that I want to mention is that if the bandwidth of the input process, which is determined by beta, is much greater than the system bandwidth, then the system behaves as if it is fed with white noise. That is the only point that I wanted to mention. <coughs> We finally define the cross spectral density. It's not a matter, matter of definition, it's a matter of derivation. Uh, you know that R x y tau is the is the convolution of R x tau with H tau and R y x tau we didn't want to confuse it with convolution, we simply wrote R x of tau plus lambda h lambda d lambda. There is something we can do though. I can write it in terms of Rxy, can't I? Can I or can I not? Minus tau, that's right. If I write this as, if I write this as minus tau, then it becomes lambda minus tau and lambda minus tau obviously can be written as tau minus lambda also and then it becomes a convolution. Agreed? Now, with this we can therefore find out by applying the definition what are the cross spectral densities S, X, Y of omega. What shall this be? Obviously, it would be the product of, you see, Rx tau convolved with H tau. So, if I take the Fourier transform, obviously it will be a product of Fourier transform that is it would be Sx of omega multiplied by H of omega. And similarly, Syx of omega shall be equal to, now <coughs> this is Rx of Rxy minus tau. What about the Fourier transform of this? It would be simply omega shall be replaced by minus omega. So, Sx of minus omega, H of minus omega. But what is Sx of minus omega? The spectral density has to be positive, even and real. And since it is an even function, therefore, this is simply Sx of omega, H of minus omega. These are very interesting relationships. These are reflections of the relationships in the time domain. Now, in the time domain also similar relationships hold. I shall conclude this class with by working out an example from the textbook 12.11. Very practical example and I could not check the temptation of working this out. This is one of my favorite examples. It says that a random process has sample functions of the form x t, the random process has sample functions of the form x t equal to x naught plus n t, where x naught is a dc, a constant, a constant and n t is random noise. A simple process that is random noise is mixed with a constant dc level, random noise whose autocorrelation function R n tau is it is a colored random noise and therefore, it is of the form some constant multiplied by e to the minus another constant mod tau. Well, for simplicity it is simply given as e to the minus tau. This is what is given. It is desired to estimate x 0. Well, when it is transmitted from one place to another the, the constant well, it becomes mixed with noise and therefore, you do not know what the value of the constant. So, at the receiving end, you want to estimate what the value of x naught is. Uh, in our, it is desired to estimate x naught by have, by passing x tree, x t through a single section R c filter. This is fed here 
and it is required to estimate from the output the value of x naught. All right. If the noise at the output of the filter, that is the output due to n t, it's a linear time invariant system. Therefore, the outputs are uh, can be isolated from one another. If the noise at the output of the filter is to have an RMS value of one percent of x naught, the noise at the output of the filter, if the noise output of the filter is y n, then what does this represent? The RMS value. What, what do you mean by the RMS value? It is the square root of yn squared mean. All right. This is to be one percent of x zero, and x zero has a true value of 0.1 volt. Why did you say true value? Because you are estimating the true value. The actual value is 0.1 volt. All right. So we have to design this filter in such a manner that the output noise is only 1 percent of x0. Well, if it is only 1 percent of x0, obviously the output shall basically and principally be x0. We can forget about the noise part. Now, what should be b? That is the process. Let, let's understand this physically. Nt is colored noise. All right, and you want to filter out the noise. You want to estimate x zero. Okay, so you <coughs> well colored noise has a spectrum, and if you um, if you can get rid of the spectrum, obviously it's very nice. But the colored noise also has a DC value. If it did not have a DC value, for example, if, if this was a bandpass noise, then we could get x zero exactly by passing through a bandpass filter. This is a low pass filter. So through a low pass filter, all that you can do is to reduce the noise root mean squared value, RMS value, as compared to what shall be the output. Now, if no NT was there, what would have been the output? Simply x0, all right. So what is basically then we have to find out what is B, all right. The problem is tackled like this. Your y of t output is h of t star x of t and therefore it is h of t star, star is for convolution, x naught plus h of t star n t. Now what is this? H t, h t is of course b e to the minus b t u t because it is a simple RC filter. But what is this then? Pardon me? X naught times this. No, this is a convolution. What is this? What is H of 0? What is the numerical value? Look at the figure and tell me. 1 and therefore it is simply x naught. It does not require any integral evaluation. A DC passes undiminished through an RC low pass filter. Therefore, this is and let us call this as Y2. Therefore, my output is equal to x naught plus Y2 and it is Y2 squared mean that we have to find out and we have to reduce it to a particular fraction of x0. Let us see what is y2 squared bar. That is the noise output. If you recall, we have to go back to the formula minus infinity to infinity d lambda 1 minus infinity to infinity h lambda 2 h lambda 1 rx of lambda 2 minus lambda 1 d lambda 1, d lambda 2. Is this formula familiar? We had written Rx of tau, Ry of tau in terms of this and there was an additional term lambda 2 minus lambda 1 minus tau. The tau is missing here because we are evaluating the mean squared value which is R, which is the autocorrelation at tau equal to 0. Now, if you substitute this, if you substitute here 
um, Rx of lambda 2 minus lambda 1 is equal to e to the power minus lambda 2 minus lambda 1 e to the minus mod tau all right and you substitute h lambda is equal to b e to the minus b lambda then the evaluation of this integral shall require a little bit of care why what is the reason you cannot do it blindly because because b e to the minus b lambda times u lambda thank you and therefore the integral shall be from 0 to infinity all right the lower limit shall be 0 but it is not that care which I am asking you to exercise I am asking you to exercise care because of this mod and therefore when you say uh, well let us write down the integral it would be b squared 0 to infinity 0 to infinity e to the minus b lambda 1 e to the minus b lambda 2 e to the minus lambda 2 minus lambda 1 mod d lambda 1 d lambda 2 all right this can be written as b squared integral 0 to infinity e to the minus b lambda 1 d lambda 1 then the the rest of the integral is e to the minus b lambda 2 now you have to separate this into two integrals one is lambda 2 less than lambda 1 the other is lambda 2 greater than lambda 1 all right the first integral for example would go from 0 to lambda 1 and the second one would go from lambda 1 to infinity and we shall have e to the minus b lambda 2 then what should be here e to the minus lambda 2 lies between 0 and lambda 1 and therefore e to the minus lambda 1 minus lambda 2 is that okay lambda 2 is less than lambda 1 and therefore and the power of e must be negative and therefore this is the result this multiplied by uh, d lambda 2 plus integral lambda 1 to infinity this is the point of the whole problem this is where people falter and the other is the same thing e to the minus b lambda 2 now you shall have you shall have e to the lambda 1 minus lambda 2 d lambda 2 if you evaluate this the evaluation is a little messy but nothing difficult it is after all integration of an exponential it is a definite integral if you if you carry out the algebra the final result that I get which I am not 100 percent confident but this is what I get y2 squared bar is this <coughs> b by 1 plus b and what we have to estimate is y2 square bar square root this is the RMS value and this RMS value is therefore b by 1 plus b and this has to be 1 percent that is 0 0.01 of x0 and x0 is 0.1 volt and therefore this is 10 to the power minus 3 3 therefore b by 1 plus b is 10 to the minus 6 so what is b put an approximation sign <laughs> although it is more or less exact and it is at this point that I wish to conclude this class. Thank you so much. I enjoyed teaching you. <laughs>